Hello creative ones, this is Robin Dudley Howes, the artsy bohemian coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. So I'm hoping that in half an hour I can show you the traveler's notebook that goes inside of the altered file folder that we did. And I just wanted to show you, I added a few more things. Um, a lot of times what happens is I feel like I'm done and then I come back the next day and I'm like, oh, might I might put a couple more things on there. So I just wanted to show you, I added some uh, paint, a little bit of uh, watercolor paint to the bird's um, crown in pink and then I put some glitter. I did some fussy cutting with this rose. I added the rose, a little bit of uh, trim here and a little piece of scrap paper underneath with a button. Another button here, and then I added some uh, dyed cheesecloth and some lace. So I kind of feel like it kind it it's a little bit more rounded out. <clears throat> and so now what I'm going to show you is the insert that goes inside of the um, alter file folder, and I'm going to show you how I organize things for that as well, and uh, show you uh, I've I've already put everything together. And I'm not going to show you me cutting paper or anything like that because we all know you probably know how to cut paper. Um, I'm going to show you the things that I used uh, and how I did the collage. Um, but again, I have already have everything set up and ready to go uh, so that we can do this um, quickly. So <clears throat> when I am, uh, again you know, making something like this, I will put everything together so that I know where it's all at. Um, for some of the, actually a lot of my um, uh, work, I use uh, tags. And Tim Holtz has these wonderful tags, but I usually run out of them because you don't get a lot of them. So I just wanted to show you some other tags that I use you can use Avery, the, like the real Avery tags. Um, those are kind of hard to find, and if you do find them, you should probably just Xerox them so you have a lot of them. Um, you can rubber, you can rubber stamps that actually look like a, a tag, which is what this is. And what else? Oh, um, this company called Red Lead Paperworks has uh, sheets, or they used to. I'm not sure if they still have them, but it's Red Lead Paperworks. Dot com. They have all kinds of wonderful digital images that are their own, and I'm sure you could probably find these, you know, labels online for free too. Um, that's just where that's where I get mine. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do the uh, altered um, paperclip and how I make this look dark and old in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so when I'm making multiples of these, I will cut everything that I need. These are die cuts from a Biggs die from Stampin' Up! that I just put a stamp on there. Uh, this is pretty thick cardstock. Um, I think it's 110 pound. So it's, you know, nice and, and sturdy. And these are some that I've already made. But when I, whenever I'm making the pages for inside of the, the notebook, I'll make and fold them and cut them the way that I need them and then put batch them all together like this. So again, they're ready to go. And I'm just going to give you the, the uh, dimensions. Um, I try to make things as simple as possible. I don't really like measuring things. And so for this little traveler's notebook, really all it is is one sheet of cardstock. Again, this is the 110 pound, and let me show you. I believe I got it either at Joann's or Michael's, whoever sells recollections. It's nice and sturdy. It's kind of this, it's actually a little bit more sturdy than the file folders that I'm using. Um, yeah, it's 110 pound cream cardstock can use whatever color you want. And then the easiest way, and this is, you know, if you don't have a scoreboard, you don't need to have one to do this. You can use a ruler and, um, but it's just really nice to have a scoreboard. So, like I said, 
this is um, just one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And you're going to measure in four and a quarter here. And then the flap is three and a quarter. I'm gonna score it and then fold it. So I'll show you. Um, it's easier to score if you have a uh, bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use like a, a pen that or pencil that doesn't have the, the tip in it. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Maybe a blunt knife would work too. But I'm just going to score this down the middle. That's here and that folds nicely. And then three and a quarter here. And this fits perfectly in the altar file folder. And there you go, you have your cover. Very simple and quick. So you don't have to cut anything. All you're gonna be doing is, is scoring it. So what I will do is, um, We'll take some Mod Podge or some kind of um, matte medium. You can use a gel medium if you want to from Golden or Liquitex or any of those. And you're going to, um, this is Mod Podge matte. We're going to take a piece of uh, an old um, piece of paper from a book, a cart from um, a book page, and it doesn't fit, and look at this, this is so serendipitous, I just pulled, tore this out, and it says building the bird, and that's what the theme of this is, I didn't even pick that, so isn't that cool, so I thought, oh, that's kind of neat, and so maybe I'll put a um, some kind of nest or something on there to kind of bring the theme together. So what I'm going to do is I am, since this is brittle paper, probably be okay by just tearing it. Actually, there's two pieces here. And I think I want, I think I like the rough edge on the side here. And I'm just going to fold it, and it's just, it's so brittle, it's just, I'm, it won't be hard to, to tear. Hopefully. <laughs> fold it again. And I like, I want to keep that number on there, because I like the old numbers on the books. And then I'm just going to Mod Podge this on to the front. Actually, it's a little bit too big still, so I am going to do this side too. I kind of wanted to keep a little bit of a border, open border here. Um, I just like the way it looks. You can do it and make it symmetrical if you want. I'm going to take my tear. So it wasn't completely ready to go, but that's okay. I think we'll be able to get everything done in this last, this, this video. This will probably be the last one for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, okay, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna take my Mod Podge and slather it on there. Um, boop. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of Mod Podge on here. I like using Mod Podge for this because I like how flat it lays. You can really make sure it stays flush to the paper, I mean to the cardstock. And then I'm just gonna go back over that gently and get all the bubbles out.
and I didn't I don't put a ton on there I just like to make sure that all the edges are down so that's that so we've covered the front and then oops I'm gonna use some more and then I already took an image and I sewed it and this is another thing you would want to do is just have um, like on all of these here I had made all these little collages so they were ready to go um, and then I could just glue them down with the Mod Podge again I did sewing on some of them after it's dried that's when I'm going to um, sew this here so that the there's a there'll be pockets on either side so I have this image it has a nest on it and it's really pretty and I just took this is very very old chemise from an old old slip I think maybe from the 20s and some really old organza and I like the way how that it's see-through so you can still see underneath and you can see the words but it just gives it a nice little bit of texture. And speaking of texture, you want to make sure everything's flat on this because uh, by the time you've put all the book pages in there, you want to make sure that it fits um, into the altered file folder. This book is very plain. I mean, this notebook is very plain and there's no 3D things on it. So you want to make everything flat. Okay, so I kind of like it right up there. And again, I'm just going to I'm going to put some Mod Podge on this. Lay that flat. Right about there. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lay the fabric down flat. It's so thin and wispy that it's not gonna provide a ton of bulk. So, and I like the way that it kind of lifts and um, isn't attached to the uh, paper. But I am gonna make sure that this is attached to the paper on the bottom. And it's just real simple and pretty and goes with the theme of the bird. Oops, now it says Bobsy Twins. I just messed that up. Oh well. I might I might tear a piece of the other page and put up put the bird part up there. Okay, so yeah, these are lifted. I'm gonna put this in some water. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to put a uh, attempt to put anyway. Oh, actually, I wanted to do this too. I think I want to put this here. That one I might just do with a, it's a bit thick, so I might just add some tacky glue to that. be kind of a flap. So there's a little bit of layering there, but they're so thin that it's not going to be too bulky. Now I am going to put uh, some rub-ons. For those of you who don't know what these are, they're, how can I say this? It's, it's an image that is translucent in a way, um, and it provides just some extra um, uh, images onto your piece. So this is all, those are rub-ons right there. They're, they're perfectly flat. Um, so that's another reason why I like them and they just add a little bit more interest to the book. And I wasn't sure if these, these are kind of old, so let's see if they work. 
usually what you you get is you get a, some kind of a tongue depressor in your in whenever you buy these. Um, I have no idea where the one is for this, but you can just use your fingers too. So the trick with rub ons is you're going to cut around, and I'm using a solid image on this because everything's so light and wispy. This will stand out. Plus, it kind of looks. Um, it's supposed to look like a little. Um, you know, hinge. So I don't know, I might do it there. And all you do is just, yeah, this one's coming right off. You can tell because it looks like a bubble. See that? That came right off. And then, um, maybe I'll do the other one on the top. You want to cut around them because um, the film, the extra film will kind of show so you don't cut it too close, but close enough. Usually there's a film of paper on these, and these are so old that I don't know what happened to it, but they seem to be working. And let's see, I'll do this one up here. This is still kind of wet from the Mod Podge, but it, looks, it seems to be fine. So I'm just using my finger, and it just came right off. That looks kind of cool. And... So that's cool. And then um, remember, we're going to be having a um, a altered paper clip on there. So that kind of adds to it as well. Um, I might add a couple more things on there, but I think you get the drift. So I am going to show you the um, how I uh, put everything together. If you already know how to do this, you can just skip over this. Um, I'm already gonna, I already have it all ready to go here. So, what I, you might want to do is if you get these annoying yellow pages still, just keep them because they work good for, um, punching holes in your, for your, your signatures. They just kind of hold everything in place like that. So, uh, for this, there is a paper bag. I think there's nine pages all together. Nine, nine pages. Um, so, there's a paper bag. And some cardstock, a doily, some paper, um, coffee stained paper. All I did was take some washi tape and glued that down so that there's, the pocket stays there. An old book page. Again, this one, same thing. I have to put some washi tape there graph paper and some watercolor paper. Before I do this, before we pierce this and um, sew it to the notebook, I thought I would just show you most of the pages are just cut seven and a half by seven and, and a half. But um, I'm kind of stingy with my my coffee dyed paper because it takes so long to to make as you may know when you make your own so this is a, a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven and what I did was um so I wouldn't cut it and and waste it not like I would waste it anyway is I just folded it so that was it was seven and a half inches high and then that gives me a pocket and then this is a flap that folds out and I did that with um, the graph paper too. Most everything else though is just cut to size. Um, so like this, this is where the washi tape is and that's what I'm going to do here too. So I, I just wanted to show you that. And then this just has a little um, a, a punch. Uh, this is a stamping up punch. Pretty sure they don't have it anymore. It was from a long time ago but you know any, this is the punch right here and um, it's kind of nice because it um, folds in half so you have a tab. So if you can find something like this, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, you can have some pretty cool tags, tabs. I'll do it on this one just to show you. So it's like it looks like this and then you just fold it. 
and then it, it's kind of neat because then you can just make a, a tab like that. This one I didn't put all the way out because I didn't want it sticking out of the, uh, the book. Okay, so, so if this is new to you, if you're new to bookmaking, journal making, um, some of these tools you, do, you, might, you might not have, and that's okay. Um, this is called an awl, and it's usually bookmakers use these. If you don't have an awl, just use a really fat needle. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna if you, when m some of these papers aren't seven and a half by seven and a half, so just center them. Make because once you poke the holes, you want to make sure you know they're fairly centered. So I'm gonna look through. So like this little doily that's in the center. I kind of already did this um, ahead of time, but you just want to kind of go through the book page is kind of centered, and this one is you know somewhat centered. So what you're going to do is push everything in there together and you're going to, you can mark it if you want to. Um, I'm just going to cheat and just do this. So what I'm doing is poking a hole in there. And what the good thing about having this um, book here is that it um, enables me to um, uh, punch all the way through and then kind of keep it in the crease because you want to make sure you do that because all of these pages stacked up on each other um, become uneven and so you want to try to keep it as even as possible so it's not too bad um, I got the hole through the other side now um, I like using these really big needles. They're about three and a half inches long. And I've already, uh, I've already threaded this. This is just uh, baker's twine. You can use whatever you want. Something thicker, you know, on the thicker side. Uh, and, the, and usually what I do is, um, however long my spine is, I'll triple that for my cord. And I, it's usually more than enough. So I am going to start on the outside and then poke through the hole that I did here. And sometimes it's not lined up, so I might have to like look through the pages to see where the hole is. There. Oops, I have to do that on the book too. That's okay. Yeah, you, you, you're gonna wanna do this on, on the, the notebook too, but I'll show you a little trick. So I'm just gonna do it on this one because this one's dry and I've already sewed it. So typically you would punch through the, the notebook too, but I didn't do that. So all I did was just line it up, make sure that, you know, that it's, there's some space on the bottom and the top that not, you know, part of it isn't hanging out. So there's that one side. And then I'm just going to thread the other side and poke the hole in there. So if you're going too fast, like I am, I'm kind of hyper sometimes. Um, you can just do this. Let me just... And there you go. So you can see there's plenty of thread 
Just kind of like center them and then tie it. And there's your cute little notebook. Very simple. You can add tags and stuff in there if you want to. And I, I usually do a double knot. So there's one and then two. And then I pull it fairly tight. You have to be a little careful because you don't want to rip everything. Especially since there's some an old book page in there. And then tie it again in a knot. There you go. And I... I don't know, I might tie this in a bow. If it's too bulky, I'll just cut it, but. And then this goes in the uh, coffee dyed envelope. And then everything goes inside the book. I mean, the ultra file folder. So, let's hopefully, hope this works. So this goes inside of here. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do the um, clothespin too. And this goes inside of here, and there you go. Cute, cute, cute. I'm going to actually match this one up with this because it, I like the way they look together. But I just wanted to show you that quickly because it was already done and dry. Okay, so for the paper clip... Again, I already I have everything in the, these little containers, so it's ready to go. Um, this is the solution I use for the patina. It is uh, I make jewelry, in case you didn't know that, um, and it's what you use for uh, soldered jewelry. Um, it's called Novacam Black Patina. You can Google it and, and find it. Usually, stained glass stores sell it um, because that, that's what they use it on stained glass. So, it's a little toxic. Um, it doesn't. There's no fumes. That that's not what I mean. You just don't want to touch it with your fingers. So, um, and I did a little experiment because sometimes paper, depending on what paper clip you get, they might be galvanized metal, meaning it won't rust. So. And that's what happened. I had two kinds and one of them didn't patina at all. And the other one patinaed like in a millisecond. These ones did not patina. So they must have some kind of coating on them or they might be galvanized. Like I said, I don't know where I got these. I think I got them from Daiso. These ones, I just got these. So you can get these at Walmart. Recycle jumbo jumbo jumber jumbo paper clips. A hundred of them. Okay, so this is now you're gonna watch this. You gotta watch this because it happens so quickly. So when you use the Nova can you wanna have some water because that neutral neutralizes it once you take it out of the, the Nova can. And this is the Nova can. These are my really fancy containers. You can tell I shop at Trader Joe's. So this is the Nova can, and I, you don't need a ton. It doesn't take much. And you're gonna need some kind of plastic implement because anything, any kind of metal that touches the Nova can will rust. So you're gonna have plastic containers or glass, but plastic, you know, it's disposable. Um, water in another tub and a plastic spoon. And then you want to have a, um, a paper towel. So now watch this. Watch how quick, quickly this is. Boom. See that? It's black. It's done. See that? And now I'm just going to neutralize it and put it in the water. And it doesn't take long. I'm just going to put these away. And you're noticing that I don't touch it. I, my, I have kind of sensitive skin, so I don't like touching it. Some people, it doesn't bother, but I just want to be on the safe side. Okay, so this, can you see that? That's black right there. So kind of just get the black part off. 
um, and see it's kind of messy. And sometimes what happens is um, they'll just keep rusting. So if you like that look, this is perfect for you. If they rust like this, all you have to do is and just lightly sand them and the rust will come off. So the next thing you're going to do is you want to have um, some ticking that you've already tea dyed. And I believe I let this sit out and, and so it was kind of crinkly. I don't think I put it in the dryer. I think I let it sit out. I think I did it last summer when it was scorching hot here. <clears throat> and um, it, it, gives, it gives it that nice wrinkly effect. So for those of you who don't know, ticking is just a really old type of uh, fabric. It's not that expensive. You can get it at most um, uh, fabric stores. And it's kind of a canvas, thick, thick canvas with this either red, blue. I think you can get it in pink too and maybe a tan. So what you're going to do is I'm just going to take a, a square of it and I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut it like this with some fabric scissors. Actually, I'm going to cut the other side too. I didn't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is then going to uh, actually, I'm not going to cut it just yet. I am going to take the paper clip that we just patinaed, and you're going to use the side, the bottom side here. You want the the um, cut end up, so this end up because we're going to slide the fabric in right there, and then we're just going to hand sew it. So it kind of drapes over that. Because just think about it when you're putting this on. You want this little clippy thing to go on your paper. So as long as, and it's not going to fit on that little cut part because there's not enough room on there, right? So just, you know, logically speaking, that's what you're going to do. So now I am, again, going to take my, um, my long, and I don't have my that I like using but oh here's some oh I already have it on here <laughs> I'm so organized okay this one's not on my long um, needle but that's okay so this is just kind of a thicker embroidery floss it's cream cream color and you're just gonna hand sew a, just a loose stitch on there on the back and then you're gonna cut it So we're just going to do a running stitch, kind of like a running stitch, kind of close to the metal. In my class that's coming up, I will be teaching you how to make your own paper clips too, out of galvanized, I mean out of uh, annealed steel. And um, I hope you sign up for the class. It's I know there's lots of free information out there um, everywhere, but my videos and my class are good to have because I show you step by step in sequence from start to finish, A to Z, how to make an amazing Bohemian junk journal. And um, everything's all in one place. You don't have to look at, you know, 100 videos to find out how to do one particular thing. I'll be showing you more, um, doing a preview of the, the um, junk journal soon. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the flap in the back because I don't need that. I cut it too, too much. There was too much there. I'm going to cut it close to where I... sewed it and then I cut I made a knot and then I'm just gonna cut that <clears throat> so you have this little flag 
And then you can make a little divot in there if you want to. Just like this. So there's that. And I already um, stamped these. What These are old Avery um, labels. And I just stamped it an image on here. This is one of my favorite stamps. And I put it in here. It, I don't think these are around anymore. It's from Gumbo Graphics. Uh, but, you know, any kind of uh, postage stamp type of stamp, rubber stamp, will work. And I just, I liked it because it says, it says Paris Exposition right there, 1900. And that's where I stamped it in black. And I'm just going to glue that down. And I put a little bit of... Uh, cheesecloth underneath it and a button that I've already put some uh, sewed some thread to because I like that look I don't like just sticking a button on there I want to usually sew, sew some thread on there so put that there and I already sewed this on here and I'm going to glue that down and that's it so I'm just going to glue it with uh, tacky glue See, I put some, I already sewed some thread on there. And there you go. And then you have, you can just make a bunch of those while you're sitting watching TV or whatever. And those will be ready to go for your traveler's notebook and altered file folders. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Um, I'd love to see you in class. Um, in the Bohemian Junk Journal class that I'm going to be teaching, there's going to be over 20 techniques um, and if you go to the link below, you can check out all of the um, techniques and tips that I'll be showing you in the class. And um, like I said, I will be previewing um, and showing you a sample of the journal in the, the, next, the few coming days coming up here. So we have our cute little altar file folder and we have our traveler's journal. And we have our insert here that goes inside. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.